This is Frank Etowagishik. I'm the president of the Association on American Indian Affairs. And I welcome you all to our annual meeting. And I'm, uh, to get us started in a good way, I'm going to offer an opening prayer. And if you would all, in your own way, pray with me in whatever way you will approach the Creator. Ani, Pipiguao Dodem, Waganuk Sing and Donjuba, Nakwe Gijik, and Dishnakaz. We thank the Creator for this beautiful day. We thank the Creator for all those ancestors that have helped pass down to us the things that we're able to keep today and uh, all those traditions and, and sacred ways. We ask the Creator to be with all those that are ailing in body and spirit on this day and with their caregivers and to reach out and touch them and help give them the strength to face the challenges in their lives, the adversity, and to help them have peace as they seek healing. We ask a blessing on all of our warriors who have fought for over the centuries to protect our people and all those veterans who have served in the, in the armed, armed services and all those who are currently serving who are in, maybe in harm's way at this time. We ask the Creator to reach out and touch them and to help bring them peace. We pray for all those youth from that eastern direction, for all the infants and the, the youth in the southern direction, and all the middle-aged folks that are in that western direction, and the elders in the north, and that circle of life that we're all a part of and that we all go through those different stages. We ask the Creator to be with us as we think about all those that are in those different stages within our families, our communities, our nations. We ask a blessing on our leaders, all those elected leaders and spiritual leaders. We ask the Creator to help guide the leaders that decisions are made, not just with their minds, but with their hearts. We're very thankful that we're all able to gather together today in this, during this time of, of pandemic, all these cha challenges. We thank the Creator for that uh, for those gifts that we're able to bring to bear to help and work with each other. The gifts of serious thought, the gifts of laughter and, and joy and song and music. We thank the Creator for all these that help enrich our lives. We ask the Creator to be with us as we go through this meeting today, this celebration, and we ask a blessing on all those who are listening and the family and all those families of all those who are listening as well. We thank the Creator for all the blessings in our lives Miigwech, 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 miigwech. Aho. Also, we want to thank all of those who've agreed to be part of this meeting for us and to provide this, uh, this entertainment for us. Uh, we really appreciate your contribution to not just to the association, but to Indian country as a whole. We really appreciate all of your, your efforts. So with that, I'll turn it back to Shannon. I've got three wonderful co-hosts who are gonna take us through the evening's events with our wonderful young and emerging artists. And uh, let me just get to those introductions. Uh, we, have ha we have three um, stellar co-hosts that have all made wonderful contributions in their fields. And they're all part of our council of advisors, uh, Sean Taylor, Kimberly Guerrero, and Tommy Orange. Uh, Kimberly Guerrero, let me get my PowerPoint going on. Say hi, Kimberly. Kimberly is Colville Salish Kootenai Cherokee and an accomplished actor and is a professor in the theater, film, and digital filmmaking department at the University of California, Riverside. Just some of her many credit, credits as an actor include uh, the Cherokee Word for Water, and The Glorias, which was recently released on Amazon. You've got to watch that movie where she played the Cherokee chief uh, Wilma Mankiller in both of those movies. She's also performed in Longmire, Blood and Oil, Grey's Anatomy, Hidalgo, and you've got to watch her as Jerry Seinfeld's girlfriend, in uh, native girlfriend in Seinfeld. Kimberly recently wrapped a compelling film by Darren Aronson, Aronofsky entitled Catch the Fair One, which addresses the ongoing crisis of missing and murdered indigenous women in North America. Sean Taylor Corbett, are you there, Sean? Hi, Sean. Hey. Um, is Blackfeet, Blackfeet 
Scandinavian and Black, an actor, a singer, and a writer with an extensive career on stage. Sean has appeared in the original production of In the Heights on Broadway, as well as in Jersey Boys and Altar Boys. His original Native American musical, Distant Thunder, about a young Native lawyer coming back to his res to do what he thinks is best for his nation, only to find that life is so much more complicated. Uh, that wonderful musical theater will be seen in 2021 at the Lyric Theater in Oklahoma City. He's a proud company member of Native Voices at the Autry and has performed with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival for the last three seasons. And last, but definitely not least, is Tommy Orange. Are you there, Tommy? Did we get you up on camera? Tommy? Oh, I don't think I could yep. see you. There you I'm are. Yay. Hi, Tommy. Hi. Um, Tommy belongs to the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. He's a graduate from the Masters of Fine Arts program at the Institute of American Indian Arts. His very first book, There, There, if you haven't read it, read it you, should, you should order that on Amazon right now, was one of the finalists for the 2019 Pulitzer Prize and received the 2019 American Book Award. Tommy's now working on a sequel to There, There, that we are patiently waiting for it to be published. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our wonderful co-host and our wonderful trifecta of co-hosts. And uh, let's get started with Tommy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, glad to be here today um, and to be a part of this wonderful long-standing organization. Thank you, Shannon. Um, and thank you for joining the Association on American Indian Affairs as we envision our future with young and emerging native artists. And envisioning our future means that we will use this time together to comp contemplate what our future can look like. And we cannot do that without listening with our hearts to the diverse expressions of our youth and stories from traditional as well as contemporary storytellers. So let's get to our first artist who will be telling us a story through the hoop dance. Patrick Willey is, an, is Navajo and at Patrick is a Navajo is also his social media handle. Patrick is from Orem, Utah, and a hoop dancer who has been dancing his entire life. He attended the Herd Museum World Hoop Dance Championship and has ranked in the top 10 for the last four years. Patrick has traveled all over the world showcasing his style of dance. He also shares his work, including his great sense of humor on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Please join me in welcoming Patrick Willey, who will be sharing his hoop dancing. Hello, Yatesh, a Patrick Willian Isha, Ashi Hanishle, Torichini Bashishin, Tachini Dashchets, and Ebethi Deshanella. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Willie. I come from the Navajo tribe, born and raised in Orem, Utah. I am happy to share some really cool things with you all, and also I'm going to be showcasing the Native American hoop dance. One of my biggest passions in life is sharing creativity, and the past several years, uh, I've been able to make some really cool pictures and really cool videos showcasing Native American culture and combining it with these creative ideas. I'm going to go ahead and sh uh, share with you guys a few different examples that I've been able to make and yeah here we go.
one of my favorite things, just pursuing creativity. I also run a YouTube channel, Patrick is a Navajo, and uh, there's a series I run called Natives React, where me and my buddy, we react to a lot of Native American humor and we cover Native American topics and showcase our Native people in a positive light. Uh, but yeah, if you're curious, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and check it out. I mean, I do that for fun. It's a big passion of mine. But yeah, creativity within my life is a huge thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and showcase the hoop dance for you all, which incorporates that as well. I am dancing inside right now. It is really cold outside in my area. It is just easier to dance inside, especially with quarantine and so forth. I'm still gonna try my best for you all. I'll be showcasing, telling the story of a warrior as he goes throughout his life. It's all about just spreading a good feeling. And that's what I hope to do for you all. I encourage you to use your imagination. And yeah, here we go.
to thank you all for allowing me to not only come and share some of my creativity and share a dance, but also hopefully I was able to share a good feeling. I want to thank you all again. Uh, yeah, uh, and thank you. Oh, give it up. Goodness. Oh, that's right. Give it up. Meet, unmute yourself. Patrick. Okay. <laughs> I, I always love hoop dancing, but. Oh my gosh. That. That he was doing that, I mean, it literally teared me up at the end. He was talking about creativity and imagination. And at the end thinking, come on, Guerrero, pull it together. That he was doing all of that in that little room is just so symbolic, right? That no matter what happens to us, we figure out a way to adapt and be extraordinary. So thank you so much. Um, everyone at home, give it up in the chat for Patrick. Thank you to those that are joining us live on Facebook. And please feel free to comment. And of course, you know, just bombard us with the, the thumbs up and the hearts. This is such an exciting time for our family at the Association on Amer American Indian Affairs as we move closer to our 100 year anniversary. You'll be hearing more about the association's history working to change the direction of American Indian policy that supports the protection of our diverse cultures and our sovereignty as native nations. You'll also be hearing more about how the association will be protecting indigenous rights for the next 100 years. Be sure that you support the association by becoming a member and following us on social media. So our next artist, oh boy, do we all need some, we need some laughter right now, right? I'm so excited to, to see her. She is Sienna East, who is Choctaw and a writer, comedian, and actor. She studied film and television production at NYU, New York University. Her short film, Lycanphobic, was included in both the LA Skins Film Festival, where it was nominated in the Emerging Filmmaker category, and the NYU First Run Festival, where it won Best Supporting Actress. After graduating from NYU, Sienna was part of the third annual LA Skins Television Writers Lab, and she performed stand-up comedy all around LA, and is a 2020 Native American Showrunner Program Fellow with LA Skins Best. You can find out more about Sienna's work at Sienna East on Instagram and Twitter, and on the web at SiennaEast.com. That is Sienna with one N. Sienna is about to share her stand-up with us, so everyone, please give a warm AAIA welcome to Sienna East. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to be here on the internet with you, looking in all of your rooms. Love doing that. Um, so I'm Sienna East. I'm 27 years old. I'm Choctaw, and my boyfriend of four years just dumped me. Uh, it's... It's, it, we were going through a rough patch and it's really sad because like I was willing, I loved him so much. I was willing to stay together and get like a really horrible divorce in 10 years. And he wasn't, that wasn't something he was interested in. So it kind of had to end. Uh, but it's been weird going through like a pandemic breakup because I couldn't like announce I was single the way I normally would. I announced I was single on Instagram instead of like the normal people way, which is by going to a party and having an incredibly public meltdown. Uh, you might recognize me. Yes, I am the girl crying in the bathroom at your party. I am currently the girl crying in my parents' back backyard, uh, which has been good. My parents have been like great and I love them super like supportive of me and my family. I really like more than anything right now, I miss hugging my family, but I would like to clarify that I don't miss hugs. I miss hugging my family. And I can explain, you guys can't tell, but I'm five feet tall. And so, yes, that is the height of both Danny DeVito and Nicki Minaj. Yes, we have a lot in common. <laughs> but um, when you're a girl and you're under 5'2", people take that as an invitation to grab you, hug you, pick you up. It's very frustrating. Uh, I don't know who decided we should greet short women by like hugging them. Whoever did, I wanna punch that person in the throat if I can reach their throat. <laughs> Ugh, but I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of it like when you're a short woman people will just come up to you and hug you when they meet you someone you've never met before will come up to you and they will put their arms around your body and place their hands on your back and they will expect for you to put your arms around their body and place your hands on their back and then they will pull you in close to their body and press you up against them so that your nipples are pressed up close near their nip, it's awful, it's awful. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, personally, the only people who can hug me are people who have seen me crying and people who have seen me naked. So if you haven't seen me crying, 
and you haven't seen me naked, you're not welcome to hug me. That being said, the amount of people who have seen me crying and who have seen me naked is a lot more than you'd expect. So I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, other like family adjustments I've had to make in quarantine or is I'm trying to figure out how to show my mom, like I'm still mad at her after we get off the phone. Like I tried slamming my bedroom door, but no matter how hard I slam it, like I know she can't hear it two miles away. My roommate has offered to call my mom when I slam my door. And I was like, it's just not the same. It won't work that way. I have been like, my family's been staying close. We've been talking a lot. Like the big way is over Zoom. Like we talk and we share family stories. I think my favorite family stories to hear though are like the ones about when my parents were kids because my parents were kids and that was weird. Wasn't it weird that your parents were children at one point? Like a story starts and my mom was a baby. That's so stupid. Tell me more. I have to know. <laughs> so um, recently my dad was telling us a story from when he was a kid about my super nana. And my super nana is what I call my great grandma because as a child, I didn't understand the concept of great. I was like, great, super interchangeable. I'm four. I'm an unstoppable idiot. Try and change that. Mm -hmm. And like, she was like super old, but like super tough. And she was like, super, like I can get on board with this. Like she was totally fine with super nana being her name for the rest of her life to me. She was like, she was super cool. She came into my fifth grade class when we were learning Native American history, I guess because she had lived Native American history to talk to us. And she comes in, I remember she came in and she's like very old, but also like very tough. And she sat in front of us like full low tie, like very serious. And we're all like, oh my God, like what's this lady gonna tell us? Like, I'm super excited. She's my great grandma, she's my super Nana. And everyone sees that this lady has lived a life. And so for an hour she sits there and she tells us to stay in school and how to skin a squirrel. That's what was important to her. That's what all these 10 year olds needed to know. That's what she valued. And you know what, she was cool. She was super tough and awesome. And like, I loved her. And so my dad was telling us a story when he was five and my aunt was 12 and my super Nana was taking them on a road trip on the Greyhound bus to go see her sister. And like already ridiculous story. My dad was five, stupid. But the story continues past my dad being five years old. So. My super nana takes them on the Greyhound bus, which two kids on a Greyhound bus, nuts for days. And some nights they stop and they stay with family and they hang out. But one night they stopped in Phoenix and they didn't know anybody. And it was like really like late and it was raining and it was cold. And so my super nana and my dad and my aunt are like walking through the city trying to get to this cheapy hotel. And there's a couple walking with them, this couple with a dog that my super nana had befriended on the bus because apparently she was the type of person who like, as it befriended people on trips. Like, that's nuts to me, that's insane. Oh my God, I'm done making friends. Friending someone on our trip is nuts. So she's walking through the city with my dad, my aunt, and this couple and their dog, and they finally make it to this cheapy motel. And uh, the couple with the dog goes to check in first, but the hotel is like, you guys can't stay here, like no dogs. We have a no dog policy. And my super Nana does not like this. And so, she looks at the hotel people and very proudly says, if they can't stay here, then I won't stay here either. And she takes my dad's hand and she takes my aunt's hand and turns them around and they start walking through the lobby to the exit. And my dad's really nervous. So he looks to like, his sister and she's nervous. Like it's cold outside, it's raining, it's dark. It's a city they don't know. Like, where are they gonna stay? And so my super Nana is proudly marching them through the lobby to the door. And my dad's kind of panicking. And after like what feels like forever, my super Nana, she's at the glass doors. And my dad's looking at the glass doors at like this dark, like rainy night. And he's kind of stressed out. And my super Nana looks down at him and she says to him, well, they called my bluff. And she turns back around and she checks into the hotel. <laughs> so I, I love her. But um, I'm really happy I was able to like share all this with you and like talk tonight. Cause like it has been hard going through a breakup. Like sometimes I'll picture my boyfriend in the future and he's sitting down with a girl and like her legs are shaved and I come up and he says, oh, my ex-girlfriend, she was crazy. And like, I think about that and I feel so sad. Like, oh, my ex-girlfriend, she was crazy because he was right and he should say it. Like I am, you've heard, the, you've heard everything. You've heard all this. I'm really sorry to all the ex-girlfriends who aren't crazy. It's my fault. I'm ruining it for all of you. Uh, thanks again. Normally before I go, I say like drive safe, but like the world's different now. So like, I like to say, clear your internet search history before your kids get online. So <laughs> hi, I'm Sienna East. Make sure to clear your internet search history before your kids go online. Thank you.
Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yourself. Applause. Yes, Sienna. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I needed that. Uh, I needed to laugh. I need to laugh. We all need to laugh right now. And Sienna, you're awesome. Um, having stand-up um, comedians is so important. And I, and I haven't seen enough uh, native stand-ups and I'm so excited to see the next generation um, and just telling our stories through comedy and all, all the pain and, and understanding coming through comedy is just like the perfect way to convey that. So thank you, Sienna. Um, thank you. Yes. And I can't wait to see more of your stuff. Um, so, hey, Tommy Kimberl and I are honored to support the association's efforts to build a world where diverse Native American cultures and values are lived, protected, and respected. The association has been working on protecting sacred sites, religious rights, and repatriations since its founding in 1922, and there is still more work to be done. Thousands of sensitive cultural and religious items often referred to as artifacts or antiquities that were stolen and looted from native nations homes and graves continue to be sold at auctions and displayed as art while contemporary artists who are creating pieces that are meant to be shared often struggle to tell their stories so let me introduce you to one of those amazing contemporary artists ryan young ryan young here he is there here they are ryan young pronouns they them there is a two-spirit Ojibwe multidisciplinary artist from Lac du Flambeau, Wisconsin. They are a graduate from the Institute of American Indian Arts, completing their BFA in photography and a certificate in performing arts. Their first photography project, titled Indigeneity, promotes representation of indigenous students at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Young's photography appeared in multiple issues and in advertisements for JG Indy during New York's Fashion Week. In 2018, Ryan was announced as Eighth Generation's designing artist for the Two-Spirit Blanket, which was released later that year. You can find Ryan at Indigenous Vengeance on Instagram and as Ryan Young Art on Facebook. Please welcome Ryan, who is joining us to talk more about their art and what it means to be a Two-Spirit artist. Ryan. Hi, everybody. I'm glad that I could be here. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen so I can show you the PowerPoint. Um, I think you might have to make me a host. Okay. Um, so uh, just before I get started, just for folks that who might not have heard the term Two Spirit before, um, it usually is kind of associated with like the LGBTQ community, but it um, actually kind of transcends, you know, beyond gender identity or sexuality, and um, it you know the term that meant kind of like what your place was in your community and how you're gonna help your people. Um, so. <clears throat> um, Around two thirds of the North American indigenous languages that um, are documented um, do have some languages or some terminology that uh, describes people who identify as um, something other than a man or a woman. Um, but the term true spirit is a pan indigenous term that was translated from the Ojibwe language um, and was adopted as kind of the, the community term to talk about um, people who were two spirit. Uh, so kind of growing up, I was questioning a lot and had a lot of, um, I guess, just, you know, I didn't see a lot of representation about queer identity in, you know, in Ojibwe history or the language classes that I was taking. So um, for a really long time, I wasn't sure whether or not, um, you know, that if there was even history or if that was like something that was going to prevent me from being able to access my culture. Um, so a lot of the early work that I started making kind of questioned those identities or started to reimagine, um, you know, mixing and um, intersecting those identities. And then uh, while I was in college in Madison, um, that's when I learned about the term two-spirit. Um, 
And then, so I kind of started creating more work that was focused on, you know, combining these identities. Um, so like, this is a piece that I made. Um, I think I was pretty much kind of like self-taught until I went to IAIA. Um, so a lot of the work that I did, I was just really interested in learning different mediums. Um, so I started a lot in like watercolor and painting. Um, this one was just a piece that I did on an unstretched canvas. Um, I started doing performance work. Um, so this was a performance that I had at um, a gallery um, for my friend's senior exhibition at Madison. Um, so I was kind of talking about the, the native experience in academia, you know, particularly in Madison that um, on Halloween, like, you know, everyone always tried, like there's a lot of people that would dress up as native people um, and then, you know, like the next day is like Native American Heritage Month, you know, so you're, you're kind of walking around and seeing like people who are your peers or people that are your classmates that are like drunk and dressed up and like either looking at like dead natives or, um, so I would, I had a, uh, a PowerPoint slideshow that was like in the back that would alternate between the pictures of the, the students on State Street um, dressed up and it intermixed with the um, images from like their residential schools. Uh, and then I started getting into photography. Um, my friends were nice enough to let me photograph them. I was super nervous. Um, so this was the first product that I worked on. Um, so I was um, <clears throat> wanted to kind of show the representation of the native students that were at UW-Madison um, because it's about 44,000 students, but then maybe there's uh, 200 that are native, so we make up like less than like half of a percent of the demographic at the university. <clears throat> um, so that work ended up kind of allowing me to do fashion photography with Native Max Magazine. So they published um, the project and then brought me on as the a deputy fashion photography editor. Um, so when I flew, I transferred out to IAIA in 2014. Um, so kind of right when I got there, I started doing um, work for Native Max right away. Um, some of these images are from like I was over by like the Buffalo Thunder Casino. Um, and I was traveling to different music festivals and taking pictures of folks, um, getting a chance to check out runway fashion shows. Um, the Indian market is probably like my favorite time um, because there's so many people that are uh, associated with IAIA that work um, on the Indian market and so I was able to kind of get you know b closer views or better places to photograph during like the fashion shows that happened. Um, so this is some of the work that I started doing while I, I so um, kind of playing with mixed media, playing with um, you know traditional materials and contemporary materials. Um, <clears throat> started doing a two-spirit project and so this one was kind of focused on just being diverse in the um, representation and kind of letting my uh, subjects be photographed how they wanted to be. And then they would um, submit a story or a statement on their identity and why they find Two-Spirit to be powerful. Um, so I kind of wanted to do something where, you know, they were being documented, but then they were also um, having their voice shared. Um, kind of helped out with a lot of different of other folks cosplay ideas. So this is my friend Desba and she did a Navajo Ray cosplay. <clears throat> so these are um, some of the products that I worked on while I was at IAI. Um, and then I got really into screen printing and um, silk screen, uh, woodcut prints. Um, uh, then I started playing with graphic design. Um, so just kind of playing with the colors and um, <clears throat> this is probably one of my more popular pieces. Um, so I like to uh, kind of like indigenize like pop culture references. And so there was like a whole series of this like trust no bitch that was over um, people's eyes. And so I did one with Columbus. <clears throat> um, and then I kind of got into textiles. So these are photos from the Two-Spirit project. And then um, folks that I found online that identified as Two-Spirit and I created a fabric out of it. Um, <clears throat> this is Ty Defoe. Uh, he's a two-spirit hoop dancer, a uh, really amazing friend. He's also, um, you know, grew up around the area where I am from. Um, so he was a really 
good resource for me when I was at IAI to kind of talk about two-spirit identity and, um, you know, have someone that related to the experiences that I had because he had also like attended the the same high school that I went to for a short time and, you know, could really relate to my experiences that I kind of went through when I was growing up. Um, so then just playing kind of more with graphic design, um, kind of reversing the images. So like there, there's the whole um, kill the Indian, save the man. Um, so this was the, I flipped the residential school before and after photos to kind of refer to decolonizing and um, re-indigenizing. <clears throat> uh, I also do a lot of work kind of around on blood quantum and like enrollment and kind of just how, you know, kind of a bittersweet system that is because it allows us to be able to kind of confirm like who's part of our communities and who, you know, are good folks, but then, you know, um, your blood quantum percentage doesn't show like how much culture you have or how much of your language you know, or, you know, that um, it's just, it's not related to what it actually means to being an indigenous person. Um, I also like to make funny ones. So <laughs> this was uh, the invasive species of North America. So we have the invasive carp, the emerald ash borer, the English ivy, and then Christopher Columbus. <clears throat> um, this was a kind of a three-dimensional photo project that I put together. Um, this was kind of a concept for a jingle dress using the, the textile that I had printed. Um, and so then I, I made the jingle cones out of the, the photos as well. <clears throat> um, so it's like a, it's a flat jingle dress piece and then the, the jingle cones and the uh, ribbon are three-dimensional. Um, and then this was my BFA exhibition um, that happened in 2018. Um, I wanted to kind of make, I wanted to make Two-Spirit folks the, the main audience and, you know, kind of create work that went beyond like the Two-Spirit 101 or like the intro to help like folks learn and kind of be like, you know, I want to create work for two-spirit people that, you know, helps them affirm their identity or that they can see themselves in this work as opposed to, you know, something where they're being taught like the most basic parts of this identity. Um, this piece is called Blood Quantum is a Heterosexual Construct. Um, so, you know, kind of growing up, a lot of people on my reservation would talk about, you know, people that they wanted to be with, but wanted to make sure like their kids would be enrolled or, you know, that enrollment in your community is like such a factor for some folks when it comes to who they're gonna be with. Um, and so I wanted to create a piece that kind of talked about how, you know, that blood quantum is not such a big factor for queer folks or for folks that don't plan on having children because, you know, it doesn't play a role um, in that aspect of our lives. Um, this piece is called My Gender is Indigenous. I wanted to, to kind of create reaffirming statements that um, combine gender and sexuality and culture and um, kind of just show that they're all related or that they're all, um, you know, like I don't navigate this world as like just a queer person or just a native person. I, you know, I go through this world with all of those identities and everything that um, builds my experience and my perception of the world. <clears throat> um, this is my friend Little Bear. This piece was, uh, my queerness is traditional, so kind of continuing with the affirmations. Um, this is my friend Mia, and then uh, this is a canvas print, and then I did beadwork on the print. Um, so just kind of playing with text and how it was on the body. Um, this is Little Bear again. This was a large wall installation that I did, um, kind of reemphasizing that the creator is two-spirit, so kind of talking about how um, you know, like there's always this conversation about like God is a man or God is a woman or all these things. And I'm like, I don't think the higher powers are focused on gender constructs at this time. Like, you know, that they transcend beyond that. Um, and then, then this was the statement that I had over the space um, to kind of just remind folks, you know, every room I walk into becomes a queer space, becomes an indigenous space, becomes a two-spirit space. You know, um, you know, a lot of the rooms that we tend to go to, like, will be the only Indigenous person or queer person um, in that space or in a classroom. But, you know, kind of reminding yourself that you're the reason why that space is becoming queer. Like, you're the reason why that space is Indigenous. Um, to kind of just stay, stay empowered and kind of um, assert your agency over your right to be in those spaces. Um, these were some mirrors that I printed. So um, this piece was called uh, What we call each other, or it's like what they call us and what 
we call ourselves. And so the first mirror has like both positive and negative connotations of like queerness and um, indigenous identity. And then the, the mirror on the bottom has the actual indigenous languages that recognize different gender identities. Um, so just reminding people like none of these words that are in <clears throat> these languages are negative. Like they're not, they're describing who this person is. They're not derogatory terms or they're not um, terms meant to be offensive. Um, and then this was the design that I submitted to eighth generation when I designed the blanket. So um, I just wanted to show folks the, the collaboration that I was able to do with um, Louis Gong over um, in Seattle. And so this was the, the two-spirit blanket that they had released later in 2018. Um, but I think that's all that I have. So, but thank you all for letting me uh, get a chance to share my work. Thank you. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. That was a uh, really incredible, um, wide ranging, subversive and beautiful set of uh, projects. We were um, actually both getting our um, respective um, degrees uh, at the same time. I was, I was at the Institute for American Indian Arts between 2014 and 2016. Um, but I was of course in the low residency program. So um, I, was, I was only there for a week every semester. But thank you for, for sharing your beautiful work. Thank you. <clears throat> in addition to protecting uh, the right to be indigenous and our cultural and religious rights, the Association of American Indian Affairs is also committed to supporting opportunities for native youth. The association supports summer camp programs that focus on language, cultural preservation, and health and wellness. The association also provides higher education scholarships for native graduates and undergraduate students that will serve their nations and Indian country and offers internships and fellowships to help shape all of our futures. <clears throat> Up next, we're joined by Raquel Quinones, who is a citizen of the Spirit Lake tribe. Um, and as a YouTube influencer, um, video producer and writer. She's a graduate at Bacon College with a bachelor's degree in media arts and loves, I'm not sure if it's, I'm sorry, if it's bacon or if, if it might sound ridiculous if it's not supposed to be bacon. I'm sorry if I, that's an insult to your college. Um, bachelor's degree with, in media arts and loves to blend her passion for digital storytelling with her everyday life. Her most popular video, Native American slang has over 200,000 views. Her ultimate goal is to bring a positive light to Native American representation by using humor. You can find Raquel by her handle, Kels a funny girl on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Please everyone welcome Raquel. Yeah, Raquel. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was nervous about like being alive. Um, of course this would happen. Um, Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, I was nervous about being live because I thought something like this would happen. And then um, I'm such a crybaby. I was literally crying. Ryan, I really, really appreciate your work. Um, that's like the most incredible work I've ever seen. So I really, really appreciate you Thank sharing you. that. And like, I really wasn't trying to cry <laughs> about that. But yeah, I'm, I get really, really emotional. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, even like all of the artists on this whole thing, I'm just really, really honored to be a part of this. Um, so yeah, even like just talking or being live or chatting on this, I was nervous because I was like, I cry really easily. So I don't want to get you guys to see me cry. But hi guys, I'm Raquel Quinones. Um, I'm a YouTuber. Um, today I did not plan on going live. I filmed a video for you guys because I knew this is going to happen. So um, Raquel, I have your video. Do you, uh, Just let me know when you want me to to share my screen. Sure, yeah, you can just go ahead, go ahead, River. You can go ahead and just start playing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's see. Um, can everyone see that? Can you give me a thumbs up? Awesome. Just expand the, the video to make it big if you can, River. Oh, it's not big? Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, um, sorry, bear with me. Let's see. Let's 
Sorry, got everyone. Give me one second. No, you had it good. You just needed to put on the full screen at the bottom right hand of the video once it's up. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, it's Cal. Cal, welcome to today's event. I'm super excited you guys ever like asked me like, oh my God, I feel like such a celebrity. But for those of you that don't know me, hi, my name is Raquel Quinones. I am a YouTuber, social media influencer. My tribe is Spirit Lake Dakota from the Spirit Lake Reservation in St. Michael, North Dakota. And so I've been doing YouTube for about six years. Um, I started my YouTube channel back in 2014. And last week I actually hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. I can't believe I have 10,000 best friends now. And so I started my YouTube channel back in 2014 while I was going to school for my bachelor's degree in media. And honestly, like, I did not want a YouTube channel. I did not, like, I watched a lot of YouTube, yes, but I just did not think I fit in with, like, what? Like, YouTubers? Like, that is not who I am. So at the time, I was posting all of my funny video content to Facebook because I would just make, like, funny videos. Like, I really didn't know what to tell people whenever they asked me, like, what kind of videos I made. I just told them, like, funny ones. I really don't freaking know. Like, just watch them and see. And so one of my professors kept getting on to me about making a YouTube channel. He kept telling me like, oh my God, I think you're so funny. Like, I really enjoy your story. You really need to put it on YouTube. He was like, oh, you have such a personality and such a great sense of humor. Like, you'd be perfect for YouTube. And I was like, what? Like, I don't know what you mean. So one thing I really struggled with with having a YouTube channel was that I felt like I didn't have like a thing. Like, you know, like every time you go on YouTube, you type in like, you know, beauty videos or travel videos or something like that. Like people are doing things like that they're specializing in. And I really didn't have like that thing. Like I didn't have a thing. Like what's Kel's thing? So at the beginning stages of my YouTube channel, I really struggled with that. I really didn't know like who I was. And like whenever I posted videos, I was like, oh, they're just funny. Like, I don't know. Like I'm just doing random things and they're funny. I really struggled with like my own identity around those times because I really wanted to like just be myself and like, you know, talk the way I usually talk. I don't know, I really felt like a lot of people wouldn't appreciate, you know, me sitting in the front of the camera like I do in my videos and just talk. So one summer I go home for a powwow, like our annual powwow every year. I go home, I visit my family, like I have such a great time. And so at the time I was living in Tulsa, so I come back to Tulsa with this thick, res accent like I'm so resy and so I was like oh let's just be funny and like make a funny like res slang video and so yeah I really didn't even think about it I just like made it because I thought it was funny and the fact that it has like over 200,000 views right now is crazy to me because I was like what like some people would be like oh my god Kel like what gave you the inspiration for that it's like <laughs> I, I'm resy like I have res slang so I made a res slang video I'm a big reser so uh, that's the motivation <laughs> so yeah from that video I feel like I really branched out when it came to like me feeling very comfortable sitting in front of the camera and like doing the videos that I do now because from that video a lot of people thought of my channel as a comedy channel which I didn't honestly see myself as a comedy channel I'm just a very funny person so I just like saw it as that because I feel like once you label yourself a comedian then there's like pressure to be funny everywhere you go and that already happens to me because like literally I'll be in public like talking to somebody and they're like oh hey Cal how are you doing and I'm like oh I'm good and then they'll be like oh my god you're so funny and I'm like literally standing there and I'm like thank you I'm like okay <laughs> And so I really rebranded myself as like a personality, like, oh my god, I'm so high class. <laughs> I really rebranded myself as a personality and I really feel comfortable in front of the camera just being myself and being naturally who I am. So the videos I do now, I do vlogs, I've done arts and crafts, I do reaction videos. I feel like all my hard work is really paying off and like me being asked to be a part of something like this that's so big, like... You guys, you have no idea. Like, I don't want to get emotional or anything like that, but whenever I was, like, asked to be on here, like, I literally cry. Like, I cry a lot, if you guys don't know. Like, if you guys watch my channel, you guys know I'm a crybaby. Look at the necklace, crybaby. That's who I am. But yeah, the growth of my channel has really been, like, my baby just because, um, whenever I first started YouTube, I was really, really depressed. Like, I've honestly, like, if you watch my channel, I've gone through, de like, different depressive stages. Like, I've really struggled with having depression and creating and being funny is something that's very therapeutic for me because it I don't know it helps me get out of that dark place and like I don't want to be sad I don't want to be in my bed all day like I want to make people laugh and I love laughing at my life and <laughs> the things that happen you know and so I never really cared about like the numbers or like if people watch my videos like I always made stuff for like for myself because I thought it was funny so the fact that people love my videos and think I'm funny too I'm like um oh. Thank you, like that's like the icing on the cake, you know? And so one thing I really admire about myself is that I never quit, like I never allowed all of the things that were happening in my life to have me quit YouTube because it really like saved me. There's something so healing just sitting down and like 
talking with my subscribers or doing stuff or sharing my life. I just really, I don't know, it's therapeutic for me and I love it and I never quit that because um, it really helped me out of my dark place. So yeah, mama didn't raise no quit. What's up? So thank you guys so much for like asking me to be here. I'm so excited. I feel like such a celebrity. Like after this, I'm like mm, getting in my limo and like drinking some Chardonnay and I'm just like so high class. Like I can't deal with it. <laughs> also check the outfit. I have my Compton shirt on. I'm not even from Compton, but you know, we're repping it. And so um, I don't want to upstage anybody if I wore like a gown. Like I don't want like everybody to be like outstaged by me, you know? <laughs> Hi mom and Spirit Lake if you're watching. Hey guys, look at me. We did it. Yeah, we're on the map. Hopefully you guys like this video too. If people that are first seeing me like probably are annoyed <laughs> by me by now, but whatever, you know. Honey, I got five minutes. You're gonna listen, okay? <laughs> shameless plug. I will link my, you know, YouTube stuff on the side. You know, shamelessly you guys can go or not go, you know. Do what you believe, you know. I'm not making you, but here it is. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for my presentation, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Ah, I'm so excited. Yeah, I look forward to all the other presentations for today. Thank you again, AAIA, for asking me to be on this. But yeah, see you guys later. Love you, love you lots. Bye. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how do you feel? How are you feeling? Great. Hey. Feeling great over here. <laughs> all right. All right. I was I was so glad to see you, McClent, tearing up a little bit because I'm like, okay, good. I'm not the only one. That was amazing and so inspiring. I, I just hope so, um, so, especially so many young people, well, you don't really have to be young, but just so many people are inspired to do what you've done and just be themselves. And, you know, I was just thinking when I was watching this, just thinking about how, you know, within so many of our cultures, the spider and the web is just such a, a powerful symbol. And it's just, isn't it amazing that how we've, like, we've, we've never, we have, it's been so long since we were able to connect, like we're connecting right now through the web. And I just, uh, it's just so exciting to get to be together and um, share our stories and share ourselves and, and go through these things together. So again, thank you, Cal. Um, I can't wait to see more of your work. Um, and speaking of which, um, working on the web and sharing our stories on the web, did you know that the association has a live native news and talk show every single Sunday called Red Hoop Talk? In fact, I was a guest on one of their episodes, but I hope you will join all of us because tomorrow night, um, we're all gonna be on Red Hoop Talk and you can get to know a little bit more about everybody, um, all of our artists and, and the, the co-host tonight. So please join us. Um, uh, that's tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So our next artist is uh, one of uh, my favorite, just young artist that just has such a great voice, AZ Dungy. She's Pamunkey and African American and is an Emmy nominated writer for her work on Net the Netflix comedy Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. She's best known as the writer and star of her critically acclaimed YouTube series, which I am obsessed with, Ask a Slave, a satirical critique of race and gender with over 2.5 million views. She most recently co-executive produced Lena Waithe's new comedy, Twenties, for Showtime, and is now on a new Tina Fey comedy, Girls 5 Eva, for NBC Peacock. You can follow AZ at AZD, which is A-Z-I-E-D-E-E -E -E on her Twitter and Instagram. And please welcome AZ as she shares an episode from her series, Ask a Slave, entitled, What About the Indians? Can everyone see that? Her. Wingapo. I'm AZ, and I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person today, but I wanted to say that I'm very happy to be among such amazing artists, some of whom I'm lucky enough to call my friends. So thank you so much for having me. And um, I thought I should introduce what you're about to see right now. Um, so I'm gonna share with you uh, one of the episodes of my web series. I'm a television writer and 
producer now, but before I uh, kind of got into my career, um, I did a web series for YouTube called Ask a Slave. And it's based on the time that I spent in the DC area working at George Washington's Mount Vernon, which is a museum and gardens and plantation. Um, and I was a character interpreter there, which is a fancy way of saying that I uh, dressed up in a costume and acted as Caroline Branham, who was um, one of Mrs. Washington's enslaved housemaids. And so what happened was people could come up to me and ask me any question. Like if you were a visitor at Mount Vernon and you wanted to know more about living there and you wanted to know how the enslaved community lived, you could just come up to me and you could talk to me and I had to respond back as Caroline Branham. Um, so I learned a lot about colonial life, about, um, American history and about Native history at the time. So I used the crazy questions and experiences that I had working at Mount Vernon and I put them in a web series um, that became sort of my satirical critique on race relations in America today. Um, so I'm sharing with you my favorite episode, which is the episode, uh, What About the Indians? Uh, we <laughs> put that one out for Thanksgiving and it, it includes a conversation between my character who's called Lizzie May and um, real life Seneca Wolf Clan chief, um, Sagoyawata, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, he was called Red Jacket by the Americans and the British. So he's a real person. And in this episode, he's portrayed by a brilliant native actor and comedian um, who's Ojibwe and his name is Jim Rule. So it was really fun to do an episode with him. Um, and the reason it's my favorite episode is because I got to talk about native culture and history and the ways in which people today, white people especially, don't understand it and mis misunderstand it, misconstrue it. Um, and hopefully it'll give you some laughs and some things to think about. Um, so thank you again, Kana, and enjoy. for joining me again for Ask a Slave. I'm Lizzie May, personal housemaid to President and Lady Washington, and I'm here to answer all of your questions. Ah, autumn is upon us. The days are shorter, the leaves are changing, and the cool breeze from the river takes a bite off the stench of these overdressed and underbathed Virginians. Small mercies. Well, let's get to the questions. Lizzie May, you just seem so good at all this. Thank you so much, sir. So what are you worth? Like, are you more expensive because you're so high up or? I am not for sale. Besides, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I know you're a slave, but what about the Indians? What about the Indians? Well, do you know any? Well, before my mother passed on, she told me her grandmother was an Indian. Oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Was your great-grandmother a uh, Cherokee princess like mine? kind of see it in my cheekbones. No, she was a slave. Cherokee princess indeed. Would I be sitting here if I was related to royalty? Next question. Hey Lizzie, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. How do you guys celebrate? Well, we go to church and then- Church? Why? To give thanks. But that's not what they did on the first Thanksgiving. The first Thanksgiving? Yeah with the Indians. Well, I don't know why y'all keep bringing up Indians, but it's a good thing I happen to have my dear friend Red Jacket visiting with me today. Red Jacket, I'm so happy you looked in on us down here at the plantation before you head back up north to your people. Yahweh Scano, I'm pleased you are well. He was just down in these parts to speak to Washington and his Congress. How did that go, by the way? Uh, you never can tell with these white men. They are so stoic. Mm, so true, they don't give nothing away. No, they prefer to take. Well, one of our guests was just asking about Indians and the first Thanksgiving. Do you know anything about that? What is Thanksgiving? It's the day you give thanks for all you have. 
My people give thanks to the Creator every day. You would think with all the white man possesses, it would take him longer than a day. Yeah, for me it takes about five minutes. Wow, Red Jacket, thank you so much for being here. I just feel such a connection with your culture. We Americans could really learn a lot from your people. You already have. We were happy to share the wisdom of our great law of peace to your Continental Congress. For example, our Article 7 is much like your Article 1 Clause 2, which you may have noticed in your Constitution. Oh, I don't know. Never read it. Why don't we take the next question? I am so excited that there's a real Native American on this show. It's just so sad that they're all dead now. Oh, hey, 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 I, I have a question for Red Jacket. Uh, peace, brother. Oh, Lord, not this one again. Was your great-grandmother a Cherokee princess, too? Like mine? I think we might be related. See it in the cheekbones. The Cherokee don't have princesses. They are a democracy. All right, cheekbones. We're going to have to move along. Next question. Lizzie May, do you guys have a big meal for Thanksgiving? Like, do you have, like, turkey and dressing? And mashed potatoes and, and mashed gravy. potatoes and gravy and green beans and, like, cornbread and, mm, like... Pumpkin pie. Yeah, and candied yams and stuff. That's a big meal? The Washingtons eat better than that for breakfast. Well, what will you be having, Red Jacket? Anything special? Oh, well... When we want to have something special, we have burnt corn soup. Why on earth would you burn your corn and then make a soup? To remember the day George Washington burned down all our cornfields and many of our people starved to death. I never knew he did that. That's terrible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let me cut in here. You can't blame George Washington for that. It was a revolutionary war. And you know what they say, all's fair in love and war. I'm not familiar with that saying. Is it from your holy book? I don't know, I never read it. I was just wondering, why did they call you Red Jacket? Is that your Indian name? No, it is my white man name. They call me Red Jacket because of my service to the British in the Revolutionary War. I was often seen wearing a red jacket. Oh no, they are always trying to change somebody's name. They did that to us too. You can't let them do it. Make them call you by your real name. What is it? My Seneca name is Sagoyewata. Sago... Sago, you what? Sago, ye You know, Red Jacket, that's a mighty fine piece of silver you got there. Yes, thank you. I received this when negotiating peace with the Americans after the war. They got our land, and I got this metal. Oh, well, it's mighty shiny. And is that you on it? Yes, it is me sharing the pipe of peace with your master, George Washington, or as we call him, Hanna de Gaius. Oh, that sounds regal. What does it mean? Town Destroyer. Well, that's all the time we have, folks. We hope you have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time on Ask a Slave. And I'd like to wish you a happy Black Friday. <laughs> that was good. That was funny. That was so good. That was oh, very funny. Wow. Oh, we need that so much, especially around this time when, when I feel like we all start getting questions like this and it's like, how do I respond? And, and you have material like this that just helps so much. Um, uh, AZ and Jim did such a fabulous job in that video. Um, so I, I, uh, I just want to, um, yeah, just, just thank you again for that, AZ. Um, it's so important to look through history with a critical lens and obviously humor, humor can make that a lot easier. Um, many of you joining us tonight are already members of the association, but if you aren't, please consider joining our family today. Anyone can be a member and participate in the governance of the organization, receive special news and our longstanding biannual publication, Indian Affairs for only $35 a year. Go to the association's website indian-affairs.org for more information. That's indian-affairs.org. Now, I'd like to introduce our final featured artist of the evening, Ray Zaragoza, one of my good friends. Ray is an award-winning singer and songwriter who NPR Music called one of the most fresh and compelling voices in folk music today. And that is so true. She is incredible. First-generation Japanese-American on her mother's side, and Akamel O'Otam on her father's side and raised in New York City, 
Ray delivers powerful missives about embracing one's own identity and discovering the power behind it. Check her, check out her album, Woman in Color, at Ray Zaragoza on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and on the web at rayzaragoza.com. Please give a warm welcome to Ray. Hi everyone, I'm Ray Saragossa and it's such an honor to be performing for you today. I'm going to play a couple songs from my new album called Woman in Color and this first song is called Fight Like a Girl and I wrote this song um, after actually meeting the amazing Deb Holland, one of the two first Native American women in Congress and meeting her um, really reminded me that as indigenous women, women of color and indigenous people at large, um, we are absolutely capable of anything. And so, uh, this is Fight Like a Girl. Grandma Nature, Mother Moon, show me what to do. When they are taking off. This next song is called Warrior, and this song is about truly finding your warrior spirit and standing up for what you know is right and really finding your voice. And I think that this theme is so important as we fight for indigenous rights and we fight for our voices because truly we are all warriors and we are continuing to fight for our voices to be heard both in politics and in American culture and beyond. So this is Warrior. Spent my summer in a van, St. Augustine to Michigan. Held my breath, said a prayer. All those people waiting there, I've been searching so long. It lived. 
lived in me all along Burn me in the desert and drown me in the rain Throw me to the thunder, push me out of the plane I don't Sharing tears, thanking grace for bringing us all here. It ain't lonely on the road when there's love everywhere you go. I've been searching so long, it lived in me all Thank you so much for having me today. Again, I'm Ray Saragosa. It's been such an honor. Have a great day. Wow. Beautiful, Ray. Thank you so much. Um, those songs were powerful and inspiring. Um, as all of the art shared today has been uh, it's so inspiring to see um, not only so much talent, but to see the world recognizing the talent and people getting through doors that uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get through. So that's really amazing to see uh, and hopeful to see. Hope to see more of it, both on the talent front and the exposure front. Um, everyone watching us on Zoom and Facebook, please give it up for all of our amazing Native artists. really strange to do zoom events and have it be silent um not that i'm any kind of performer but i did have to go in front of people to read my book or talk about the book and um i was wasn't getting laughs but you can feel when there's an audience there you can, you can hear it the sounds and it's really strange to not have that so i appreciate everyone having the courage to come up and do it even without the response or uh, only getting the little squares, visual squares of movement and delayed laughter. Um, so we've heard some incredible emerging artists, uh, also learned about more about the powerful work that the Association on American Indian Affairs does throughout Indian country. If you're already a member of the association, thank you for your support and thank you for joining us tonight. If you are new to the association and haven't become a member yet, consider joining today on our website at indian-affairs.org. 
and uh, now we go to Sean. Yeah, thank you, Tommy. Um, I just want to uh, also thank all the artists here tonight. That was so inspiring. Every time I hear, um, I hear and see young artists work community, it just really inspires me in my own life and being being so isolated this is just so needed for the soul so thank you everyone and i also want to thank tommy and kimberly you've both been um inspiring to me i want to share that i i was one of four narrators on tommy's book there there and it changed uh changed my life when i read that book and i think it's gonna go down as one of the you know our greatest novels out there so thank you tommy for that and um and Kimberly, thank you for being such a, <clears throat> a leader in our community and an incredible artist, so supportive always uh, of me and, and everyone. So both of you are really special to us. Um, so I want to also thank the dedicated staff, board, mem board of directors, and all the co our Council of Advisors members that support the day to day efforts of the association. You are all wonderful and it's hard work that you do and dedication, we appreciate you so much. Remember that tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time, all of us will be chatting it up, chatting it up on Red Hoop Talk. So come and join us, guys, um, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. If you have any questions for, for the artists or me, Tommy and Kimberly, tomorrow's Red Hoop Talk is a great chance to join the conversation. And I want to pass it over to Kimberly. Who's crying again? <laughs> no. Um, oh my gosh, you know, I just, oh, it's so, it feels so good as a Native person to be crying for joy. So thank you everyone today for sharing. <laughs> Kel, <look. laughs> thank you so much. I mean, dang it. We've been fighting for so hard for sovereignty over our stories an agency over our present and our future. And it's just like so much hope today. And just thinking that this meeting has been going on for 98 years and this is the 98th year and it's so different. And all that we've gone through in the past 98 years to be here today, it's just such a, it's such a blessing. And I'm just very grateful and I'm gonna stop crying and get back to the script. Okay. If you would like to follow the association's important work, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and at IndianAffairs.org. Org. These are links that are all in the chat and up on your screen. So on behalf of my co-hosts, who, P.S., are two of my favorite Native American storytellers, contemporary Native American, actually just any storyteller of any persuasion. Thank you so much. And um, on behalf of the Association on American Indian Affairs, thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you tomorrow on Red Hoop Talk. And I'm going to now turn it back over to our president, Frank Edowagishik, who will provide us a closing song and a prayer for our health and safety. Frank, take it away. I, I really appreciate what everybody's been able to put together here. And uh, Kimberly, your, your, your talk about the 98 years is, uh, is really, uh, it's, it's something that, that, you know, few organizations actually see that long. And this one has been around for so long and has done so much work uh, over the years. And at any given time, it's a struggle sometimes as we move through these things. This last year through the this pandemic has been a real struggle to figure out how to do everything. Uh, I really want to uh, ask everybody to uh, send good thoughts and, and thank you to our, to our executive director, Shannon. Uh, who has done so much work in putting this meeting together and we're actually running right on time. It's just, it's really, a, she's done a, a really good job doing all of this and everybody's been doing great. And I really appreciate what everybody has had to, uh, uh, has had to offer to us here. Uh, I'm going to sing a short song. I, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I do, I am, while I, I enjoy singing and I really put my heart into it. I can't do as anywhere nearly as well as those of you who sing for a living and do all these things, but I sing from the heart on this. And I'm going to sing just a short song that's a thank you song. And it's, it's, it's saying, Miigwech, or thank you for, to the four directions. 
as we think about this, all of us coming from those four directions and all of us in our own way going to those four directions as we as we part company when we leave this when we leave this meeting. And so uh, with that, I'm going to sing this short song. Mi gwechendi go heya heya heida heya heya heida. Mi gwechendi go heya heya heida heya heya heida. Mi gwechendi go heya heya heida heya heya heida. Mi gwechendi go heya heya heida heya. Hey, uh, hey, da. Miigwech. Thanks, everybody, for attending, and I, I hope you all have a, have a great evening. See everybody later. Bye.